Okay, welcome to Word Without Walls. Welcome to the Wednesday night sunlight service. The title of the message tonight is Peace Out. And this title may have worked better when I had long hair and I wore sandals every day, you know, like Peace Out. But really, what I want to talk about tonight at the end of the year, the last service of 2016, is... Don't let your heart be troubled, okay? And the reason that we can not let our hearts be troubled is because of the peace that comes from knowing that the creator of the universe loves us, guides us, protects us, takes care of us. So that's what we're going to, that's how we're going to close out the year. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, is just basically peace versus trouble, and, and, and peace wins. So, my first verse I want to read is John 14, 27, and I want to read it in the King James and the Message and the New Living Translation. So, this is Jesus speaking, and in the King James it reads like this. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I think there's some really, really important things here. Uh, hit the emphasis on my peace, Jesus' peace, I think is very important. Because, I mean, he, he really reiterates it. He says, not as the world giveth. Because, you know, sometimes peace in the world is... Uh, what do they say? Peace is just the absence of conflict. But, you know, in the world, it's like forgive, but don't forget. Where it's like these shaky alliances, these, this, this, this shaky peace that could change at any moment. He says, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And if you're in a shaky alliance, if you're in a shaky peace, if you're in a place where, you know, uh, where it's in a... a an emotional roller coaster and you're at the top of the hill right now, but you could come crashing down any time... You're going to worry about that. You're going to have, your heart is going to be troubled about that. And that's why he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I think that's another important key here, is he's talking, as he often did, about what really matters. He's talking about the heart, okay? Because I think a lot of times we have this battle between the head and the heart, where sometimes, you know, we, 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 we overthink things. Sometimes we let our mind run away with things. Sometimes, you know, the, I, I've said this many times, the, the biggest enemy that we have is this one right between our ears. You know, we worry about stuff, and, 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 and I, the, I think the best definition I've heard of the word worry is worry is praying for something you don't want. Okay? And, and, and you know... What you feed is what grows. So if all you're doing is focusing all of your attention, all of your energy, all of your three T's, your time, your talent, your treasure, if you're focusing all of those things on something negative, that's what you're feeding, and that's what will grow. So he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And now, uh, I'm going to come back to the King James Version, but I want to jump over to the New Living Translation Version, because it says it, in, in my opinion, even better. And the NLT, John 14, 27, reads like this. I am leaving you with a gift. So first of all, it's a gift. You know, like the gift of God, which is eternal life. This is not something that can be earned. This is not something that can be worked for. This peace that we're talking about, it's a gift. It's not something you get by doing something. You don't get peace by conquering your enemies. Okay? We get peace because Jesus conquered. And, we're, and I think we're going to look at that in, in, in just a little bit. But it says, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. So in the NLT it puts in that this isn't just, just in the heart. This is the, this is the whole deal. This is not peace like the world gives you. This is a, a, an overreaching peace, a total and complete peace. He says, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And see, if I, I think if we would listen to our heart, 
then we would see that the mind of Christ, which is already in us, and all we have to do is let it be in us, we will see that the mind of Christ is the heart of Christ. We'll see that it's the same thing, and we'll stop having this struggle between the head and the heart. We'll stop having this trouble between what we think and what we feel, if I can say it that way. We'll get these things lined up, we'll get these things in sync, we'll see that Jesus has put these things into divine order. So when we're talking about letting our heart not be troubled, then, then we're talking about peace of mind and heart. We're talking about something I'm not worried about, whatever's going on around me. You know, we, we, we always have these catchphrases like, you know, don't tell God how big your storm is, tell your storm how big God is. And I think that really, that's kind of the correct focus, is, is I'm not going to worry about all this other stuff, because I know Daddy's got my back. He's given me the gift. He's given me a gift. And not, not a gift that the world could give, not a gift that I could earn myself, because if you have to earn it, it's not a gift. But peace of mind and heart, total and complete peace. So again, we're talking about, you know, I didn't write this verse down, but it's, it's about, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's almost like a knowledge that passes knowledge or, or a peace that passes understanding. It's something that doesn't necessarily make sense. How can you be so peaceful when all this stuff is going on around you? Well, because the fire in me is always hotter than the fire I'm in. I don't need to worry about what's going on around me because I have something better inside me. And uh, going back to the King James Version, the word peace in John 14, 27 is number 1515 in Strong's Greek Concordance. And the word peace means prosperity, which remember last week we were talking about how sharing is caring. We were talking about how we are blessed to be a blessing. If you have peace, it's because you're not worried about whatever it is. You're living out of abundance. You have this prosperity. You know that God has and is and will take care of you. And, and, and not only take care of you, but prosper you. It means prosperity, quietness, rest, or set at one again. Which, really, I think rest and being set at one again are, are, are really kind of the same thing. Because to me, that just means being put you know, put in sync with God. And if you're in sync with God, then you're at peace, right? You're, at, you're, you're in a posture of rest. And again, rest doesn't mean inactivity. Rest means Holy Spirit directed activity. Because if, you, if, if you're loving from a place of rest, you're still giving everything you are and everything you have, right? That's what love is, right? Love is giving, and it's giving yourself. It's giving everything you are and everything you have. But it's doing it from a posture of rest. It's not doing it from a place of worry. It's not doing it from a place of, I'll give you what I got, but i got to give something back, otherwise I won't have anything. That's not love. Love is never about trying to get anything. Because again, love is giving. You just give it, and you don't worry about what happens next. You don't worry about running out of it, because you know you're connected to the unlimited source of love. So... You don't have to, you're, you, there's a quietness about it. You're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, trying to make something happen, right? Because it's a gift, right? There's a quietness about it. You're not banging your head against the wall and ending up with, with just a headache. You don't have to force a square peg into a round hole. You can just let things flow. You can go from a position of, or, or a posture of rest. You have been set at one with Him. There's no separation between you and God. There's no separation between you and love. You don't have to look for love in all the wrong places when you can go straight to the source. So there's prosperity. There's, there's a quietness. You're at rest because you've been set at one again with God. And that's what peace is. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. You don't have to, to, to fight to make something happen. So let me, in the Message Bible, it actually chunks together John 14, verses 25 through 27, so I'll just read the whole thing in the Message Bible. It says, I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The Friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you. 
I'm leaving you well and whole, which again, set at one again. He's leaving us in a peaceful place. And again, this was Jesus talking to, you know, actual physical people when he was actually physically planning to leave and give them the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit descended. But again, he says, uh, it says, I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. And I think that's another important thing because, you know, the Holy Spirit is the comforter, right? And God is described as the God of all comfort, okay? So it's not this big, mean, scary God that we seem to have, have built up this idea of. It's a loving Heavenly Father who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even when Jesus' physical body left, what did he do? He took up a boat in our bodies. So he didn't leave us. He didn't forsake us. It just changed. It was just a, a, a change that took place. The Word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And then the Word began to dwell within us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So, it's all about His peace. Not what the world has to offer, but a more excellent way. Which took me to, actually, backed me up to John chapter 14, verse 1. And in the King James, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And I think this is the key. How the... He gave us His peace. That's why we can let our hearts not be troubled. But here's how we let our hearts not be troubled. And how do we let our heart not be troubled? By believing in God. By, by, by trusting, as it says in the NLT, in the NLT, John 14 verse 1 says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. And I almost, you know, I almost like that a little bit better because lots of people claim that they believe in God, but it's a whole different thing to trust Him. Especially when you feel like you've hit rock bottom and you feel like you're, you know, you're in a tight spot. You feel like you need some help. It's one thing to believe in God. It's a, it's, it's a whole other thing to trust in Him. But if you have this peace, if your heart is, if you're in that position and your heart is troubled, you're going to try to work your way out of it. And God doesn't want you to work your way out of it. Not in your own strength. Not in your own power. He wants you to trust in Him. He wants you to believe in Him. He wants you to have faith in Him. And that's what faith is. You know, we, we, we've looked at that this year. About how faith is the evidence of things not seen. We have faith because He's proven Himself faithful. We trust Him because He's proven Himself trustworthy. So when He says, believe in God, believe also in me. I almost like it better where it says, trust in God and trust also in me. Because if you trust in God, then your heart should never be troubled. Because you'll understand that it's really, your heart is really His heart beating with love in your chest. So, how do we trust in love? Well, by loving. So, to me, whatever situation we're in, instead of stressing out about it, freaking out about it, we can have peace about it and we can love about it. We can love in whatever situation it is. And I've found that, that when love enters the equation, th that's usually exactly what is needed. So then, a couple of chapters later, in John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, and, and and I think we all I think we all know that I think we all agree with that, right? In the world, stuff happens. If it's not one thing, it's something else. It seems like there's always mountains to climb, but at the same time, I always bring this up. I think it's in Isaiah. We see that on the cross, Jesus brought the mountains low, and he brought the valleys high, and he made a straight way for us. So, while it may seem like there's always another mountain to climb, really, He's already taken care of it. We don't have to overcome when we understand that we are overcomers because He overcame. And that's what it says next. He says, 
in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So where does our where, where does our peace come from? Where does his peace come from? It, it comes from him. And not only that, but it's in him. Alright? So when we when when we start to figure out who we are in Christ, by figuring out who Christ is in us, by letting him reveal himself to us and in us and through us, that's when we really start to understand his perfect peace. Then we stop trying to overcome. All right? Because if you're trying to overcome, there's two options. You'll you'll either succeed or you'll fail. But if you stop trying to overcome, and you just understand that he's already overcome, and I don't need to overcome, then you've already succeeded. Okay? We're not trying to finish the work so we can rest. He finished the work, and now we can rest. Which again is what that word peace means. So, he did all the work, and we get to enjoy the fruit of his labor, which is the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. Alright? We never have to work hard. If, you, if, if you're in a relationship where you feel like you have to work to be loved, that's probably not a super healthy relationship. Alright? Love is not something you can earn. Love is freely given. Remember, I think it, either last week or the week before, when we saw freely you have received, freely give, we're not trying to earn things. We're not working in, in, in that sense. We're not doing, you know, spiritual calisthenics. If I go to church more often, God will love me more. No. God already loves you as much as anybody could love anybody. And he always has, and he always will. And his love is not conditional. It doesn't depend on what you do. Okay? His love is dependent on who you are and who he is. Okay? He is our loving Heavenly Father. We are his beloved Son in whom he is well pleased. Alright? That's why nothing can separate us from his love. Okay? So, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. And then he says, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Alright? We don't have to let every little thing that goes wrong wreck us. Okay? We can start to understand that a no from God is not a rejection. It's a redirection because he has something better in mind for us. Right? There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. We always think we know what to do. We always think we know what's best, but guess who knows what's best? God does. Which is to say, guess who knows what's best? Love does. If you're in a situation for yourself, trying to get something for yourself, that's not love. So he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Don't worry about all the stuff that's going to happen because I've already taken care of it. Right? God wrote the end from the beginning. Right? The Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. All this stuff that has happened, it's, it's for us, but it, it doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with us. Right? When, when, when God made the covenant, quote-unquote, with Abraham, God really made the covenant with himself and included Abraham in it. When God made the new covenant, he made it with himself. He is, Jesus is the new covenant. So again, this is not something that we have to hold up our end of the bargain. This is not something that's dependent on us. This is a gift that was given to us. Okay? God wanted the best for us, so he gave the best to us. He gave us his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave us a gift so that we could be at peace about it. So now let's look at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. And I just want to, I want to end tonight's sermon, and also I, I want to end out the year of 2016 just, just by looking at the kingdom of God, uh, which again is also the kingdom of love. And according to Romans 14, verse 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So there we see that peace again. You can't be a citizen of the kingdom and also let your heart be troubled. Okay? Those are like mutually exclusive things. You can't run around the world trying to do things the world's way and also be tapped into what's available to us in the kingdom. Because it's righteousness, peace, and joy, and it's in the Holy Ghost. And where's the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is in us. 
So this whole deal, it comes from the inside out. It's not something that the world can give or that, that the world would give. And, and, and again, you know, it's, it's the whole idea of, of being in the world but not of the world, right? Because in the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Jesus overcame the world. He gave us his peace, his righteousness, his joy by giving us himself, by giving us his spirit. And that's what we have. And that's what we are. So now I want to add to that Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17, which I thought was really interesting because Isaiah 32 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Okay? So again, when we're talking about resting, that doesn't mean that we're not working. It just means it's not works and labor, right? Because, you know, faith works by love, okay? And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. When you understand that you've been set at one with God, when you understand that there's no separation between God and man because God lives in man, when you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, when you when you start to see your true identity for when you try to when you start to see yourself for who you really are, not a not a not a lowly sinner, not a scumbag, not all these different things, not not on the highway to hell, not all these different things that we seem to heap condemnation on ourselves and disqualify ourselves and bury ourselves under all this stuff. But when we start to see ourselves as we truly are, when we start to receive this gift that we've been given, which again is peace, which is righteousness, which is joy, because all of that is in the Holy Ghost and we were given the Holy Ghost, then we can start to understand that the work of righteousness shall be peace. Okay, how did Jesus win the war to end all wars on the cross? By surrendering. Not by fighting, but by laying his life down. Right? He came to show us another option. He came to show us a more excellent way. When he said, you know, if someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. And yet in religious circles, all we want to do is fight about anything and everything. Right? But he didn't say, in the world you will have tribulation, try really hard to overcome it. And he said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, don't worry about it. Stuff's going to happen, because stuff happens. That's life. And, and, and you know, every day, it's, it's a new adventure. It's, every day, it's something else. It's something new. Don't worry about it. Be of good cheer. Trust in Him, because He has already overcome the world. He already took care of whatever the problem is. He knows your needs before you even ask for them. Right? And He's already given us more than we could ask, or even think. So it says, And the effect of righteousness, the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And, and, and to me, those last two words, forever, are pretty important when you think about how we have been given everlasting life, never-ending life. Okay? This isn't one of those shaky alliances that that we have peace now, but then we'll have war, and then maybe we'll have peace again. No, this is quietness and assurance forever. He won the war to end all wars, which means there's no more wars. Which means the only fight we need to fight is the good fight of faith, which is laying hold of eternal life, which is receiving the gift that we've been given. And by receiving it, I mean knowing and believing that we have it, opening up the gift, and taking it out of the box and playing with it and sharing it and giving it away. And you can do that when you're at peace. When you're not afraid of losing what you got. Because, again, you know you're connected to the unlimited source. You're fill, you've are you already been filled to overflowing with the very thing that you need and the very thing that everybody else needs. So just know that it's in there and it'll come out all on its own. It's too big to hold it. Which brought me to my final verse for tonight, my final verse for this year, which is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. And in the King James it reads like this, Whom having not seen, 
ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's the third part of the, the, uh, of, of the definition that we used of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy. And not just joy, but unspeakable joy. A joy that you can't even express. And where does it come from? It says, Whom having not seen, ye love. Our unspeakable joy, the joy that we can't even comprehend or contain, it comes from loving one another. Because how do we love Him? If, if, you know, if we go back and look at this, it talks about how can you say you love God who you've never seen when you don't love your brother who you have seen, right? We love God by loving each other. And even though we haven't seen Him, we love Him, right? And the Message Bible reads like this. You never saw Him, yet you love Him. You still don't see Him, yet you trust Him with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking forward to. Total salvation. And again, I believe we already have total salvation. And I don't think it's something we need to get. I just think it's something that is constantly being revealed to us. So we come into the manifestation of it. We come into the, the fullness of it. Right? But again, in, in, in the King James it says, uh, Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you know, one of my favorite verses, the, the verse I, I, I wrote, pretty much wrote Identity Crisis about, is about looking into the mirror with an unveiled face, seeing the glory of God, and being changed into that same image from glory to glory, right? We already have this fullness of glory. We already have this unspeakable joy. The problem is, is that we speak about everything else. The problem is, is that even though we haven't seen Him, but we love Him, all we do is we worry about the things we do see. And that's where I believe Paul wrote about in another place about how you know, we look at the things that are unseen, because those are the things that are eternal, right? We don't always have to worry about the fact of the matter when we know the truth of the matter, because truth is higher than fact, right? And you know what they say about statistics? I, I think they, what do they say, like 90% of st statistics are made up? Like anybody can say anything they want about numbers, and you can get what you want it to say. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus loves us. Jesus took care of whatever it is that we're going to face next. And really, we have two choices. We can freak out about it, or we can peace out about it. And I think one of those choices is better than the other one. I've done them both. And I can absolutely tell you that if you come into a situation that doesn't look good from a place of peace and prosperity and quietness and eternal assurance and I'm okay, and I'm going to be okay, then that situation will be a lot easier than if you come to it into that same situation and you freak out and you try to make it fit how you think it should fit. Okay? And, and I think it's in the book of Romans. It talks about how all things work together for good. Right? And, and, and I always say, and I've been saying it a lot lately, things work out in the end. If it hasn't worked out yet, it's not the end yet. So don't worry about it. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. Where you're at right now is not where you're going to be forever. So just enjoy where you're at right now. Just let what's inside of you come out wherever you're at. And in and, and, and that way, improve whatever situation you're in. Just, just let what's inside, righteousness, peace, joy, the kingdom, love, let it come out. And I didn't say force it out. I didn't say fake it till you make it. I said let it come out. And the way you let it come out is by knowing and believing that it's in there. By trusting in Him. By not letting your hearts be troubled. Remember John 14, 1 in the, in the NLT? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in Jesus. That's what I want to leave us with here at the end of the year as we start a new year. And, and, and you know... Probably next week we'll talk about some new things. But to end this out, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't freak out. Peace out. It's, it's, it's been given to us. It's a gift. It's, it's there. So just let it, 
Let what's there be there. Let the mind of Christ that's in you be in you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Guard your heart. Because out of your heart, you know, comes the issues of life. As a man thinks, the mind again, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's all about living from the inside out. It's all about the heart. It's all about love. So that's what I have for this week. As always, I just want to thank you so much for all of your support through all, I, th I think this is the fourth year that we've been doing Word Without Walls, but whatever it is, another year's passed, and I just want to thank you all so much for your support, helping me get this word out. Uh, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen.